Hi there, I'm Adrian Paul and welcome to Film Fight Insights. I'm uh, going to take you over the next few weeks to uh, a few different films that uh, I've chosen and some that you've actually suggested that I should take a look at to give you a little insight in some of the things that you might not have seen when you first saw the movie. The first one we're actually going to be doing is going to be a 1977 film by Ridley Scott. It was his first film that he actually did. It was called The Duelists, of course. Uh, it was starred Keith Carradine and uh, Harvey Keitel. It was a, a beautifully shot movie. I saw it uh, recently again and uh, I wanted to highlight this fight because the fights in it were very realistic. They were very well choreographed, very well shot and very well performed in the realism and the grittiness that they were. It was based on a short story by Joseph Conrad uh, about two French military officers. Dupont, one of the officers, was ordered to deliver a message to a fellow officer called Fournier, who was a rabid duelist. And in doing so, Fournier took offense to the message and therefore um, <laughs> challenged him to a duel. And by doing so, it lasted the next 20 years. The way they shot this, which I think was, uh, was beautifully done, it didn't take a lot of moves. The moves were very quick and, and they even waited for a while. And, and even the, the style of the move the, the other uh, opponent in this first scene, uh, his slashes are very erratic and that really indicated his fear and what he thought might happen in this, in this particular fight. You can see it in the very beginning here, he's just slashing away and uh, Fournier is standing there with, you know, very like, okay, let's get on with this, let's move on. And he, he kind of eventually, as you see it gradually, you'll see that his his guard, which is in a, we'll talk about pronated and supernated guards in a second, but he's just really sort of uh, testing the man and the man is really going backwards and forwards around him. And Ridley Scott used handheld for this to get, when he got into the tighter shots, really to sort of uh, highlight the grittiness of things. Now, you get to the wide shot again. When he cuts to the wide shot, and you see all the cows in the background. Now, you, now this is where you see Harvey Keitel's or Fournier's confidence happen because he drops his guard, he stands there, he looks at the man, he tests him a few couple of other times with about three or four um, short uh, thrusts and cuts, very small cut. Harvey actually uh, is uh, standing there with a guard and he has his interior hand inside here. And we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, He's, he's almost like a cat waiting for, for the, the guy to pounce and he, and he says something to the guy and he cuts to the girl looking at it, which I thought was kind of interesting. Again, the, the, the parries of the, of the opponent really are nothing. They're not really doing very much. And eventually, he makes the big mistake of grabbing the sword. But what I liked there was the, the reaction of the girl. You go immediately back into the reaction of the girl. And then Harvey's um, reaction as Fournier of, oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, see, that's what happens when you come against me. Oh, well, let's move on to the next one. That was a really interesting intro to the way that this fight went. Now, the second fight. Second fight is the first fight that um, we see uh, between uh, Fournier and between Dupont. Now, here you have both of them standing at each other now waiting for the next one to move and again the, the the tension here is the fight the conversation is in the tension as they wait as they t touch swords lightly you will see in a second there are only probably five moves before the final thrust and this is what a real sword fight uh, uh, cut uh, actually had it didn't really sh if you look closely it didn't really look like he thrust stabbed at him but the reaction from Carradine did when he walks away and he has a little blood on there, the audience is like, oh, he got cut. What I love about what Harvey Keitel does here is he actually walks up to, <laughs> to Carradine, picks up his sword and says, here, take this, would you? We, we've got to continue this fight. And he's willing and he wants to continue the fight, which then lends to the central theme of the movie, which is I need to be kill or, to kill or be killed. The third and final fight, which is... Again, something interesting. I, I, I really enjoyed it because it came out of uh, a thought process. You know, this time what um, uh, Ridley Scott did was he 
put the fight in the man's mind first, thinking about it, and then suddenly you cut into it and you're in the middle of it. You're al- they're already bloodied. They're already tired. They're exhausted. They're, they've been slamming each other against the walls and on the ground. And when you see even Harvey Keitel's movement, his, his hands are, are straight out this way rather than slightly bent, which is a te- technical thing I would look at. But um, the way that they're flailing at each other, they're kneeling, kneeing each other, they're, they're throwing dust in each other's faces, the, the, the parries are awkward, the, the cuts are awkward, shows you that even in this particular fight, this type of uh, fight probably would have gone on like this, um, where it was totally exhausting. Carradine can hardly hold up his weapon at this particular point. Here, as you can see, some of the parries, they're just wild. They're wild slashes from both of them. Uh, they're falling over. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that they did the same things several times. Um, and yet, even when you know uh, Dupont gets cut, the, the, the wait happens. Now, right after this point, this is where I see some of the choreography happen. And eventually, the, the seconds and everybody else had to literally pry them apart because this fight was going nowhere. 